The Tories are out to crush the small landlord. The spring budget of 2024 is absolute proof of this because there are four things they've done, there are four changes they've done in that budget which are absolutely crushing to the smaller landlord. In this video, I'll speculate as to why they're doing this, what those four things that, that they have done actually are, and I'll give you a route map out of all of this which shows you how you can not just survive, but thrive. That's all coming up. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, smash that bell icon. We put out videos each and every week to keep you up to date with what's happening in the world of property. So we have had the budget of spring 24. You'd think there'd be a whole bunch of measures in there to help the Tories win the election. But all the pundits seem to agree the budget is completely flat and is not doing that. But there are some things that they've done. In fact, there are four things that they've done in the budget which are quite clear and together amount to a massive attack on the small landlord. What do I mean by the small landlord? We're talking about people that own second properties in their own personal lane, which they let out. They're okay with corporate landlords, so landlords who are doing it as a business and own their properties in limited companies and corporate structures. But the wrath of Tory policy seems to be against the smaller landlord, say the dentist or the doctor with a couple of buy lets on the side as a bit of a pension. Those sort of people are absolutely clobbered. Now what are the four things that the Tories have done in this budget and what's your way out of these if you're affected? Well the first thing they've done is they've abolished the furnished holiday let regime. Now in 2015 George Osborne changed the game for buy-to-let property investors. If you owned buy-to-let property in your own name, which was subject to a mortgage, from that time you could no longer claim mortgage interest as a business expense. But there was an exception to that regime, because if you had furnished holiday lettings, in other words, you had a residential property and it was available to let for 210 days in a given year, then it was accounted as a trading business rather than a buy-to-let business. And you were allowed to claim your mortgage interest as a business expense against your uh, taxable income. But that has now been abolished. Now let me just reiterate something. If you own a holiday letting accommodation and you own it in a limited company, then you can still claim the mortgage interest as a business expense. But if you own that in your own name, you can't. So what they're saying is that if you own property and you let it out and you own it in your personal name, then you cannot claim your mortgage interest as an expense, period. So they're forcing you either to put those properties into some kind of corporate structure, which you actually can do. There are ways of incorporating particularly furnished holiday let accommodation because it's seen as a trading asset and a trading business. There are ways of incorporating those into a limited company, but that's uh, something for another video. You can do that or you can sell up. And that's basically what the government is saying. You know, go big or go corporate or go home. Now this is a strange thing about the budget. There seems to be a whole package of measures that taken together in unison are all designed to crush the smaller unincorporated buy-to-let landlord. So what they've also done with the furnished holiday let regime is that they've said that the new rules are not going to come into effect until 5th of April 2025. You've got till then to do one of two things. Either put those properties into a limited company so that you can claim the mortgage interest or sell up. Now the interesting thing is provided your furnished holiday let has been available for two years and it's been available to let for 210 days minimum in each of those two years then it qualifies for business asset disposable relief which means that you will only pay 10% capital gains tax on the disposal of that asset. So you see what they've done? You know, they've abolished the furnished holiday let regime. Um, they've said the rules aren't coming in until 5th of April 2025. But because you can benefit from this business asset disposal relief, you can either incorporate and still claim your mortgage interest or sell up and get out and uh, just be taxed at 10% capital gain. 
Now I'm going to speculate later on as to why they're all doing all of this, but there's more to come. There are more changes in this budget, which all are geared towards crushing the smaller unincorporated landlord. If you're finding this video interesting, of course, smash the like button and uh, subscribe for more. We put out three videos each and every week. They've also made changes to uh, capital gains tax. Now, capital gains tax is 18%, but if you have residential property in your own name, it used to be 28%. So 18% for everything else, shares or whatever it is, it's 18%. But if you have um, residential property in your own name, the capital gains tax was 28%. Now, as of this budget, they've reduced that to 24%. So again, it's a further sweetener. They're saying, look, either you get incorporated or just get out. And as a little sweetener to sell those properties, we're reducing the capital gains tax you'd pay from 28 to 24%. And there's more. The other thing they did in the budget, again, which is laser targeted against the smaller landlord, is the abolishing of multiple dwellings relief. Now I've got a whole video on how you can kind of still benefit by um, purchasing multiple properties under a single transaction. That's all coming out later, so make sure you subscribe so that you're notified when that comes out. But let me just explain what multiple dwellings relief is. It's basically when you buy a number of different uh, properties under a single transaction. So of course, the minimum threshold for stamp duty to be payable is 250,000 pounds. So if I was to buy a flat for 200 grand, then there wouldn't be any stamp duty payable. So if I was then to buy a flat for 200K today, and then in two months time buy another one from someone else at 200K, and then a few months time buy another one for 200K, I can end up buying four flats and not pay a million pounds worth of property and not pay any stamp duty, because it's four separate transactions. So what, um, what multiple dwellings relief was about is that if I'm to buy a block of four flats all in one go from the same vendor, each flat may be worth 200k, the total might be worth 800k, but I'm not paying stamp duty as though I'm buying one £800,000 property. I'm paying stamp duty as though I'm buying four individual 200k properties, which in this example is zero. So what they've done, rather bizarrely, is to completely abolish MDR altogether. Now I think that's completely unfair because it laser target it targets the smaller landlord. Here's why. Because if you are buying six or more properties in one transaction, there are several other reliefs and exemptions and loopholes, you can call them, uh, you can benefit from. But if you're buying a smaller parcel of properties in one transaction, in other words, under six, then there's limited amount you can do. Now this all seems very, very strange. In an election year, you would think they would be doing a whole bunch of changes in the budget, which together create better prosperity for all and all the rest of it and gives them greater chance of winning the next election. But it seems that there are a whole bunch of measures which are all designed to do exactly the same thing, which is create further pressure on individual ownership of rental property. They don't seem to want that anymore. The Conservatives seem to be on the path of favouring corporate landlords only. And there are all sorts of big players looking to enter in the market, some of which have already entered into the market. And these are big giants with thousands of rental units under their portfolio. And of course it will be different rules that apply to these corporate landlords as opposed to the smaller landlord. So why are they doing all of this? Well, there are going to be a lot of Conservative ministers at the general election uh, looking for future jobs and directorships. Perhaps they're setting themselves up for those sort of employment opportunities. But the mood music is clear. Before the election, the Conservatives have gone all out to ensure that the small-time landlord owning properties in their individual name uh, doesn't exist. So it's incorporate or sell up. Now, of course, a lot of these problems that I'm talking about affects people that have been in the buy-to-let game for several years because they're the ones who have typically got properties in their own name. People that have entered the buy-to-let space in the last five years have pretty much universally bought their properties in a limited company structure. So you guys are pretty much good to go. It's just the old-time buy-to-letters have a little bit of thinking to do. 
We're going to cover this in more detail in future videos, so make sure you subscribe and smash that bell icon so you're notified when we upload new videos. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.